Hi Warriors, it's Hannah here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing why you should exercise in recovery. Who would actually benefit from exercising in recovery, what exercises they should do and why these benefits apply. I hope you enjoy the video, if you do be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, it really helps me out, it really helps me rank a bit higher and get my word out to other people, so don't forget to do that and let's get to the content. You've all heard it before, you should abstain from exercising. You should abstain both for mental and physical reasons because obviously if you're addicted to exercise then exercising is only going to perpetuate that addiction and if you think that you'd be really unhealthy without exercise, you gain a lot of weight without exercise, well, exercising is gonna perpetuate that belief because you never get a chance to disprove these maladaptive and misinformed thoughts. So, if you challenge the thoughts and stop exercising, you'll find out that your worst nightmares aren't actually gonna play out. In addition, there's obviously the physical aspect and adding a lot of stress to your body circulating all of these stress hormones which are needed for your body to repair after exercise really isn't that good an idea even if you do increase your calories a lot because your body will literally just spend this energy for vital functions and repairs and it's not gonna allocate any energy to non-vital functions such as reproductive functioning which is nevertheless really important and i explain more about that in my get your period back videos in this series, I also explain um, the effects, for example, on bones. Uh, exercise is really good for bone health, but obviously if you're underweight and you need to have certain repairs carried out in your body, not exercising is so much better for your bones because it might help you get your period back and it might normalize your hormones. So yeah, it seems like I'm just reiterating what you already know. For the time being, it might be better to just Take a rest if you typically work out in the morning, just sleep a bit longer. Or if you typically work out in the afternoon, replace it with another hobby or activity that's just a bit calmer, more relaxing. Have a bath, have some more me time, things like that. Honestly, following this advice can save your life. And I've promoted this advice before and I still stand by it. Especially if you're at a critically low weight, and or if eating disorder still has a really strong hold over your thoughts and your behaviors, follow that advice. Stop this video right now and follow that advice. Honestly, do not exercise. I do want to say that there are some exercises that you might be able to do, but stick around till the end of the video and I'll expand on that. Anyway, in terms of the people that might benefit from exercise, first off, it's really important to be at a healthier weight. It's really important to be in a mentally more comfortable and more recovered state because if not, I mean common sense. Anyway, once you are at a healthier weight, once you have a healthier mentality, after obviously checking with your doctor, reintroducing exercise can actually be a good thing. For me personally, I was scared to reintroduce exercise for the longest amount of time because I wasn't sure whether it would become compulsive again. And I was just really scared that it was going to be detrimental to my physical health. However, once I got the green light from the doctors that physically I was fine and I realized that mentally I was strong enough, I reintroduced exercise. And it's the best thing I ever did because I absolutely love it. I can now approach it not in a black or white way, but in a much more relaxed way. And I can move my body when I want to. I can have a day of rest when I want to. And it's amazing. In addition, I also experienced a range of other benefits, which I think could apply to some of you as well. First off, I gained strength, which after feeling so weak in my eating disorder, and after wanting to disappear and be tiny, was incredible. It gave me so much confidence as well. And after an eating disorder, that little bit of extra confidence can do a whole lot to your mental health. Next, I just found a fun way to spend my time. 
especially during COVID-19 times, when sometimes it's just a matter of finding things to do. This is a nice thing to do. It gets the happy hormones going and whilst you can get these hormones just from spending some time outside. I enjoy going to the gym and it can be really social as well if you decide to have a gym buddy or go with a friend. Finally, exercising can be a really, really good incentive to take good care of yourself and it's part of my self-care personally. However, I do want to note that if exercise is your only incentive to say eat well, then there's a problem because that means that if you can't exercise one day, you might not eat as well or you might not allow yourself food and that's not okay. Whether you exercise or not, you should be able to feed yourself. Make sure you're able to take care of yourself before reintroducing exercise. Anyway, for me personally, these benefits have all come from strength training, where I focus on gaining mass and gaining confidence through strength rather than exercises that are more cardio focused or more about shrinking down or toning. For me personally, that's what I enjoy and for a lot of people I think that's a healthy approach to exercise. If you prefer cardio, that's obviously fine, but do check in with yourself that you're doing it for the right reasons. So, earlier I said that everyone can benefit from some exercises. Let me just specify what these exercises are. The first exercise is practicing self-love. Yes, it's proper training, retraining and rewiring the brain. And it is so important especially when you can't go to the gym or you can't go for a run. You've got the time, no excuses. Every day, write down a few things you are grateful for and write down a few things that you're proud of, some things that you've achieved to rewire your brain. Even if you never physically exercise ever again, I think this is the best mental exercise that you can do. If it is all you do, you will be healthy, you will be happy, so do it. Next, practice setting boundaries. It's so important to learn how to say no and to really acknowledge and protect your own boundaries and your own needs and your own desires. I have really struggled with this in the past, but now that I'm able to set my boundaries, I am so much happier and so much healthier. So it's something to definitely, definitely not underestimate. Lastly, even if you're at a very low weight or if the eating disorder still has a hold on you, personally, I think it's okay to do some stretches, maybe some very light yoga or some very short walks, but beware, try not to put excessive stress on your body. It's good to feel your body, to stretch out and yeah, deal with just sitting around for a long amount of time, but do it for the right reasons. Do it out of self-love and not out of self-hatred. So, I challenge you to train yourself to be okay with the inactivity. Train yourself to challenge the eating disorder at every opportunity you get. Train yourself to love yourself. This is the kind of training that you can and should do every single day. It's the kind of training that will fuel rather than hinder your recovery. Rather than challenging yourself at the gym, maybe it's time to challenge yourself at the dining room table. Challenge a fear food and do it regularly. Rather than focusing on the social norms of what healthy is, what healthy behavior is, focus on what works for you and what is gonna bring you your health, which in this case is recovery. Recovery is and should be your first priority. So go and do that. But before you go, be sure to press the thumbs up and the subscribe. As I said, it really helps me out a lot. Anyway, what do you do in terms of exercise? Definitely let me know below and let me know how it helps you mentally and physically in your recovery. If you want to see the exercises that I first introduced after I recovered, definitely check out my fully dedicated video to that on Patreon. In this video, I also talk about how my routine changed and how I fueled myself throughout all of this. 
I also have a weekend vlog up on YouTube where I show you a day in my exercise routine. So if you're interested in that, check that out too. I'll leave loads of resources for you in the description below. I love y'all loads and I'll see you next week for another video.